Hey, it's Norm from Tested. I'm here in Southern California and joined by Mike Senna. Mike, this is your workshop. Yeah, this is where I work on all my robots and all my projects. Robots is what you build. <laughs> so for people who uh, may be fans of Tested, may recognize Mike from conventions because you're one of the WALL-E builders. And for a long time, you've also been a member of the R2 D2 Builders Club. That's why you got you, you get your badge. Yeah, we're usually at conventions. Michael McMaster and I take our Wallies out and uh, entertain people. And, and they're also... so lovely uh, and so interactive. You guys have done some really amazing work with the mechanics and the electronics, uh, but there's a new challenge coming up this year. Uh, Star Wars Episode Seven: The Force Awakens comes out and there's a new droid, as you guys know, BB-8. You were at Star Wars Celebration and when you and the other R2-2 builders saw that BB-8 roll out on stage, what was your first thought? We all flipped out. We saw this thing on stage. It was it was incredible. Nobody was expecting it, first of all. Everybody was thinking it was CG and they're never going to be able to make such a thing. So when it rolled out on stage, everybody in the whole place, I mean, I think you've seen videos oh, and yeah. things, everyone stood up and just screamed. Steve Sansweet holding his cheeks. Oh my God, you're, you fall in love with it right away. Uh, your brain must have already started turning its gears, oh. figuring out how to make it work. Now, a lot of stories come out about the actual production, because what you see in that Star Wars Celebration video, the BB-8 that rolls out on stage, it turns out wasn't the one they used to film the movie. Um, in the movie, how many were there? You know, I don't know how many there were, but I know there were puppeteered, like you said. Mm. I don't know if they're going to put CG in there, maybe for the compartments. I have no idea. We'll have right. to see. We, we haven't but seen the movie yet. All I know is the RC one was not involved yeah. In the film. There was an interview with Mark Hamill, which I think was the first hint that they actually made a real one. And now on StarWars.com, you can actually read an in-depth story about that production. J.J. Abrams went to their fabrication team, went to the prop team and said, can we do this? And what they ended up doing is they brought him several models, which they all ended up using, ones that had arms attached to it that they you know, then CG'd out, some that had hidden wheels so they could roll around, uh -huh. ones that had the moving head for close-ups and detail shots. But basically, that's, that's movie magic. But there's also a lot of magic in having something autonomous and rolling around by itself or is controlled without any other assistance, and that's what you want to do. Um, to get started with that, we also want to look at that Sphero. Uh, people out there, the, the hottest toy this season, I want one so bad, is that BB-8 toy Sphero. Yeah. And you recently got your hands on one. Um, and we want to see whether the mechanics of that Sphero can scale up, can work for a full-size BB-8. Have you been having fun with that? Yeah, I really like the little one. It's, it's, uh, you, need, you need to get used to the controls. Once you get used to the controls, it's pretty good. And it's motion because it has that head that stays on top. Informs a lot about what you can do with IMU sensor data, electronics, wheels, gyroscopes, but at that small scale. Yeah. Um, but to get into that, let's just take one apart. Yeah. Want to take one apart? Let's do it. Man. Let's do it. Uh, so we got one right here. Sphero has been a company uh, around for a couple of years doing the just the rolling ball, but now they've attached that and clearly magnets. There's got to be magnets. Uh, if you look at the bottom, there are wheels there. So uh -huh. there are electronics here that tell the head how to move uh, along, or the, the mass, tr something moves it, right? Um, but we want to see how it works on the inside. Now, you also came up with something potentially interesting. Yeah, so I found this ball, this clear ball from uh, uh, one of the craft stores. Um, it's when I measured it, it was almost exactly the same size as this ball. This measured like 2.8. This one measured like 2.7. I'm hoping this will fit in and we'll put the insides in here and then roll them around and, and see actually it working. Well, step one, we got to take this apart. So let's get to taking this apart. So Mike, one idea you had was just to take it to a bandsaw and have it slice through. But we thought that this actually might work as well using heat. Yeah, so this is just a regular uh, styrofoam cutter. Uh, hopefully we can get a clean cut on this ball and, and uh, maybe put it back together again. Yeah, uh, other people who have taken apart their BB-8 Sphero balls have used things like Dremels. And because it's a sphere, you got to be careful. If you're taking apart a Sphero or a BB-8 toy, be real careful. Uh, we're going to exercise some caution as well. You think it's deeper than that? Oh, you can see that as you're pulling up, it's even 
The plastic's already coming back together. We might have to go on the Get on the, the bandsaw. Band yeah. All right, I think you got this. You had to go to the bandsaw eventually. Yes, <laughs> yes we did, but. Ah, there it goes. Inside of the BB-8 Sphero. Yeah. Oh, some melted stuff going on there. Okay. So this is just, that's a pretty okay. thick shell, if you look at that. That is so thick, I didn't even think it would be that thick. It's, it's almost like an eighth of an inch thick. Yeah. Sturdy, okay. So we got that. Now let's look at these components. Um, the Sphero, which uh, we've seen taken apart before, uh, is exactly almost like this. You have your, your wheels, this plastic base, um, that keeps it centered on the ground. Yeah, that looks like the weight plus the coil for the charging. Mm, that's right, inductive charging. Correct. Uh, and definitely the weight. Um, and then what's new is on top here, which is the mast. And that just sticks yeah. up and has a magnet system. So this guy, the head, can stick on top like that. And it just runs on wheels on the inside. Um, so if you think about it, if you put this on here, as the ball roll, rolls, the weight keeps it down. So that keeps it down, and then it's, the wheels are actually just moving along the inside of the ball uh, and spinning the ball the other, mm -hmm. other direction. Nice and smooth. Yeah. Um, seems pretty simple. And then this whole thing actually comes off. So this is the mast right there. That's, that's what, what's new. You want to pop this inside the clear one and get it working? <sighs> now I'm scared because that thing's so thick. I wonder if it's going to work. Let's try it out. Great, Scott, looks like it works. I think that'll work. Yeah, let's get it running. Oh, there it goes. Oh, that's great. Mike, you did it. It worked. Yeah. Uh, so the outer shell uh, of the BB-8 Sphero turned out to be pretty thick. And I think that actually worked to your advantage a little bit because uh, this ornament shell that you got at just a craft store is a little smaller. And once you clean off the wheels, sealed it together, you can actually see how it moves. So I'm holding up in the air right now to illustrate when you control it and you spin uh -huh. it, the wheels are moving and the weight keeps it down. And when it spins, that's actually the, what moves the head mast as well. Uh -huh. If you want to turn the head of BB-8, the whole body spins. Um, if you want to just spin the, uh, the, the BB-8 itself, the body, then you know, it'll fix that and then it'll sp spin the other way. Oh, yeah, there it goes. Yeah, the head spinning just by these wheels on the bottom spinning as well. Uh, there's the weight, of course, so as I simulate like different a different uh, angle of movement the weight keeps it centered in the bottom and then we can put it on the table you can do like a maybe even a light spin and there it goes you can see it that's so cool so what do you think uh, is what do you think is causing the wobbliness of it well it's it's obviously working just like a weeble where the weight's at the bottom and it doesn't really have any mechanical stabilization that i'm guessing the stage bb8 has that's right so we're talking about an electronic stabilization system it's taking accelerometer data uh, basically what's in your cell phone what what allows you to detect tilts and movements on your cell phone and mm -hmm. translating that and compensating using wheels mechanical as opposed to a uh, a gyro, a mechanical gyro, right. which uh, maybe wouldn't fit into something this small. Possibly, yeah, and uh, maybe it's less important for this one to, to wobble. Right, and then wobble. other limitations, like you can't spin the head while spinning or moving the body, right? You know, the head movement is actually the same mechanics as the body movement, so yeah. it's like one or the other. Yeah. Interesting, So Super it is interesting. And I love that, uh, gyro electronic gyro that keeps it faced in one direction mm -hmm. uh, so in thinking about 
your BBA project because you actually are going to have been working on one are going to start working on one. Uh, what are you and other BBA builders doing? What are, what are other people doing out there? So there is a BBA builders club that's been started. Um, it was originally started by two guys, Tiny Pan Ganaban mm -hmm. and uh, Michael Irwin. Ah. Uh, now Tiny, the guy is brilliant. He created these 3D files for printing the BBA head. And so we're, we're at that point now that we have a complete head that's Completely beautiful, all the details on it. Michael Irwin teamed up with Tiny because Tiny didn't have the 3D printer, but Michael Irwin did. So it was a great asset for Tiny and Michael Irwin to work together. Again, the building community always works together. We find a way to get things done. And these two guys were just marvelous. So they got together, the Tiny would create the files, send them to Irwin, Irwin would print them, uh, make suggestions on how it would print better or whatever. Tiny would tweak the files. And then both of them, out of the good of their hearts, are going to release these files to the public. Awesome. The head, at least right now, can be gotten from the club for That's free. Wonderful. And that website, bb8builders.club, if you want to check that out. Very excited. So them, along with you, also working on full-size BB-8s. That's a project not yet complete. We have a few more months until the movie comes out, but let's go check in with you another time and look at that big project. Thanks for helping us take this apart and show how, at least on small scale, it works. Yeah, you're welcome. See you, Mike, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.